made in 1720 on the order of a princess, 10 centimeters wide and over 300 long of the finest, whitest Flemish linen designed by a young man who would become one of France's most famous artists. It took a master lace maker one and a half years to make. She lived in Valenciennes in the north and had four living children. She was 22 when she started, 24 when she finished. She had apprenticed as a lace maker from the age of seven and had taken her 15 years to get to the top of her game. She worked out of her cellar to keep the lace moist. She cracked the door to let in only a shaft of light. Every inch took a week to weave. Every weave required 490 bobbins. Every knot and cord took 32 movements of her fingers. The woman began to lose her sight at the age of 34. Her fingers doubled up in arthritis by the time she was 40. It cost the king the equivalent of 135,000 euros on delivery. Less than 10% of that went to the lace maker. The princess wore the lace on her wedding day. No one had ever seen such fine work, so gossamer light. She would not let anyone touch it, especially the king, her father. He could maintain an entire garrison of soldiers for the price he'd paid, but he never touched it. His hands were too soiled from counting money. The linen grew by a river in Flanders. That plant is now extinct. Never again will we see such strength and such a slender, weightless fiber. The lace is as soft and exquisite as the day it was made 300 years ago. The precision, the liveliness of the flowers is unsurpassed. There are an infinite variety of fillings, yet a strange symmetry emerges. The teasing bizarreness of the motifs, the freedom in the swirls, the stretch of the leaves, the staggering smallness of the mesh, everything is beyond the human, almost fairy-like. The lace was passed from generation to generation, always for a wedding dress or ball. In 1789, it saw its last wedding, worn by a princess of 19. The next year, she took it to the guillotine. A butcher woman found it in a basket with a severed head. It had been around the princess's neck and floated down unharmed. The woman washed it and recognized its value. She hid it from her husband and only brought it out when he was away. She gave it to her daughter, a fishmonger, who would never touch it for fear her hands would make it smell. More than a century passed, and then, in the great calamity, of 1914, when half of France was starving. It was sold to an American woman of the Kellogg fortune, who was volunteering to bring food to France and wanted it 
for her own daughter's wedding. It spent another century in the home of an old New England family. And then, in 2013, for the price of $3,316.99, it made its way again back to Europe and into the hands of Dr. Ken Strauss, collector and curator. There are probably 10 pieces in the world this fine.